Only consciousness exists as reality. You can unleash the power of your imagination if you understand the true meaning of this word. If you want to alter your reality or the reality of the world around you, you must understand the power of your imagination. I'll clarify the true meaning of this statement in this video, so be sure to watch the whole video. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos on the law of assumption and manifestation. So let's get started. Without a doubt, Neville Goddard is the best teacher of modern manifestation, and the reason is that his writings and lectures are both filled with extremely great, thought-provoking content. It sparks discussion and has helped a lot of people make life-changing decisions. You are reminded of your power and the energy you have created via your ideas and imagination when you hear this statement. For this reason, the things we see around us have no purpose or worth if there is no imagination or thought. This is so since everything comes from one's imagination. If there was no imagination, nothing would happen or have an occurrence. If anything or an activity is first imagined in our imaginations, we would then perform the particular action or finish the particular task. Let's make things simple. How we act is controlled by our thinking. I would want to include an explanation from Neville Goddard. Remain committed to the fact that your consciousness, your ins, and your awareness of being aware is the only truth it is the rock on which all events can be characterized, he advises. There isn't any other reason but that. I am not aware of a specific definition of a phenomenon that states everything is conscious. If there is disaster in my world, it is all my fault. I created the light and the joy, if there is any. Nothing else exists if you are unable to locate a cause that is not related to your consciousness. Your environment act as a big mirror that constantly reflects who you are back to you. These are not any of my words. These amazing statements were made by the men who made the discovery that consciousness is the sole reality. I embody this understanding of who you are as a person. Beyond yourself, your impact on the universe is interconnected with and affects the world around you, your environment, as well as each other, everything else and the things you interact with all have an effect. You appear to be blocked off from other people or things that are found elsewhere. But in reality, everything around you is tied to you. Everything in this world includes you, and without your consciousness, nothing would exist. You won't be able to interact with things or converse with other people without consciousness. To put it another way, if your consciousness didn't exist, neither would things or people. If you're unsure of what I'm saying or have any doubts, think about quantum physics. Each atom, according to quantum theory, has subatomic waves of probability that, when observed, collapse and become quantum particles. Quantum physics, in other words, shows that what appears to be solid and objectively real is not merely what is observed that seems to acquire shape but rather, that form is dependent upon that observation. It's now fascinating to see how closely the claim made by Neville Goddard matches the quantum physics law. Using quantum physics, Neville Goddard's assertion is confirmed. According to quantum physics, what you are aware of is real for you. If you aren't aware of something, it doesn't exist for you. Another fact is that you have control over your consciousness. Additionally, you have the choice to widen your consciousness. The decision to do so is entirely yours. Whatever you think about the circumstance, you will experience the same thing. For instance, if you choose to acknowledge the rudeness of others toward you, you will unavoidably encounter conflict. On the other hand, if you choose to thank others for their compassion toward you, they will treat you well. It follows that your choice of thinking will determine whether you receive a reward or a punishment since there is no such thing as judging God. Instead, only your consciousness has the power to reward or punish you. Your life is impacted and affected by the choices you make. What you are aware of and what you choose to concentrate on both have an impact. Once you completely understand this, you'll be able to recognize how much potential and impact you possess. Here, Neville Goddard confirmed the proverb, God and man are one. Given that closeness implies separation, if God and man are one, God cannot possibly be both close and distant at the same time. One can inquire, what is God? 
God is human consciousness, knowledge, and I am Him. It indicates that you are the architect of your reality and not constrained by your physical limitations, not your physical body, but your mind. You are aware and in the moment, and the world wouldn't exist without you. The world is you. Being aware of both your body and mind right now will make it the simplest for you to understand this concept. Although you might think that this is all you have, you are actually not limited by your body, your thoughts, or the people that are aware of you. Through consciousness, you become aware of oneself. You are conscious of it. You couldn't think or imagine if you were just a body with no mind. You are only conscious of and respectful of your body and its capabilities though, because you are a person with a mind in addition to a body. However, you are not aware of how brilliant your mind is. Your mind is more powerful than your physical body. Humans have the capacity to transcend their physical selves, minds, and thoughts. Additionally, you can teach your mind to concentrate on the things you want to come to pass in your life in order to discipline or educate your body to pay attention to what you want it to. You can summon anything you want to experience with your consciousness, even if you desire to have an out-of-body experience, in order to experience something more spiritual. It's important to remember that Neville Goddard and many of his students have gone through similar circumstances. It's neither difficult nor rare. By paying attention to them, you can bring these sensations into your awareness. After such an interaction, you will also understand that you are not constrained by a body and a soul. Another Neville Goddard quote that addresses the relationship between time and consciousness is provided here. Man is such a slave to time that if he adopts a state of awareness that is not currently visible to the world and it, and that state does not immediately embody itself, he loses faith in his unseen claim, drops it right away, and returns to his former static condition of existence. There is no past, present, or future in his view. Reality just exists in the here and now, as you can see. There is only the present now because your mind perceives time differently than reality does. Books provide the impression of having a story and a timeline when you quickly turn the pages, but life is really only the present moment. However, if you stop turning the pages, you'll see that time has stopped and each page will stand still. Turning the pages is the only way to acquire the sense of a before and after. In actuality though, every page is open at the same time. We all experience the illusion of the past and future in life. However, we are living in the present because we are here right now. In the present, everything is real. Creation is complete. Everything has already been created. So all we need to do is choose what we want to experience, receive, or experience. Everything you desire has already come to pass. Anything you can imagine probably already exists. If you want to create anything, including any circumstance, someone, or experience, you only need to consciously arrive at that condition. If you don't now possess something, you have not yet arrived at the point where you will. Therefore, if you want to manifest that particular object, you must consciously enter a condition of owning it. And you'll need to be persistent in such circumstance. Your objective will be achieved after you execute that step. However, if you are persistent in wanting to have it realized, your desire won't manifest. Imagine it in your thoughts and assume it as a given before trying to manifest it in the third dimensional world. After that, incorporate it into your awareness and consciousness. Therefore, don't be deceived into believing that everything already exists by what it is or isn't imaginable. Creation is complete. Everything has already been created. Why are you pursuing your goal when it has manifested as you can see? You can experience the state in which your goal has been fulfilled by just changing your state of mind. That is what you must do. This is what is meant when someone says, consciousness is the sole reality. Your desire is already genuine and present, therefore there is no need for you to worry about it. When the time is right, you will realize it is there, but you must be persistent and instill it in your thoughts if you want it to materialize as consciousness alone constitutes reality. Therefore, you must be conscious of your desire. You must maintain a condition that is consistent with your desire for it to naturally manifest in your life. It is simple and easy to do. If you enjoyed this video, 
please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for many more amazing videos. Take care and enjoy.